Y'all already know what it is, man. It's time for the uh, offseason. So the Clippers, shout out to them. Um, champions or whatnot. And um, Paul George, finals MVP. <laughs> it's a big offseason for us. Let's see who retiring. LeBron retiring? Absolutely not. This can only be done once per year. I hate this because this means that the next year I can't override this and he's going to he's going to retire. Um, maybe, maybe if we if we make sure his next contract is loaded with years, he doesn't retire. Maybe, but they got some he they got some heavy hitters on here, man. Like I can see some of these got like yeah, Boban retiring, Dwayne that man okay. Ricky Rubio actually in real life retired, but like Pat Bev, I don't see, I don't see Pat Bev retiring right now. I think Pat Bev, I don't ever see Pat Bev retiring. I think Pat Bev is a guy where like he's gonna ride it out until nobody calling that phone, he'll, or or he's just gonna go right into coaching or something like that. Blake Griffin, I guess he's retired. All right, I won't touch that. But like PJ Tucker, I think PJ still got like two to three left in him. You know what I'm saying? Like I, Augustine, okay. Some of these names I can see, you know, Drogic, he's actually retired. George Hill for sure. I may let Wesley Matthews retire, but some of these dudes, Al Horford, definitely not retiring. LeBron James, definitely not. Thaddeus Young, definitely not. Uh, I'll let DeAndre Jordan retire. F it. Um, Jeff Green. I'm going to let Jeff Green retire. I don't know if he said it. Some I feel like he said this was his last year. I don't know why I feel like that. Eric Gordon, no. Derrick Rose, no. And um, Pat Bev, no. Who else? Who else? Who else? Markeith, I'll give him one year. PJ Tucker, one more year. Everybody else, I think I'm going to let that. Jeff Green, ah, what did he do this year? Six points, two rebounds, 50, ah, 14. He played 14 minutes. I'm going to give him one more year, man. One more year. DeAndre Jordan really ain't playing behind Jokic. I'm going to just give him one more year, too. F it. Just one more year. One more year. Staff retirement. Oh, Joe Pruton. He do not look like that in real life, by the way, y'all. Um, So we got some assistant coaches retiring. Hall of Fame inductees. Nobody. Jersey retirements. Blake Griffin. Whoa, the Clippers. They win a championship and then retire the jersey of Blake Griffin. They should have signed them to that roster. They should have signed Blake Griffin on that roster to win a championship. They should have did that. Let Blake Griffin sneak in and get him a ring if you're going to retire that jersey. Um, league meetings. I always reject everything. Only 10 players from each count. No, let's, let's just reject everything. I'm... Uh, the top two picks are decided through an elimination tournament. That sounds cool, but uh, reject. Just reject everything. 2K be trying to add in some like crazy rule changes. Not really my type of vibe. Draft lottery. Come on, man. Come on, man. Where our picks gonna land? I don't know where our picks gonna land. Yeah, we don't need. Okay, so the Grizzlies. Wow, this is a dream situation for the Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies, riddled by injuries. Ja Morant, Desmond Bain. Uh, I think in our sim, Jaron Jackson missed some time. They had a boatload of in Marcus Smart. Four to five starters missed some time. Um, so they obviously missed the playoffs, but the dream scenario is for them to get the number one overall pick. They got that. Uh, shout out to KB, king of the fourth quarter, Cuzzo. The Bulls get the third overall pick. Charlotte at number two. Um, this is the back. This is the second year Charlotte was at number two. Last year they took Brandon Miller, so now they're at number two again. The Spurs are at number four. Um, and we have our picks. So we have the 16th pick. We have the 17th pick. We have the 20th pick and then 21. So our picks are back to back twice. We got four overall. We got four first round picks overall. And um, we are we are going to look to make some moves with those. Hopefully we, you know, maybe we do a trade. Maybe we do a dra uh, Maybe we draft. Who knows? Maybe we do a little bit of both. Who knows? All right. Now we got the draft combine. I save y'all the time of seeing me sign staff i know that's the boring part of it um we got some good hires though but as far as scouting first thing i want to do is i want to look at the mock draft this is the sporting news mock draft they have us let's see the four players they got us taking they got us taking anton watson out of gonzaga they have us taking trevon brazil out of arkansas who i like a lot in real life but i don't know if those are the type of guys we're targeting right now 
And then 20 and 21, they have a second AJ Mitchell and they have a second Bronny James. I know a lot of people would probably be very high on us taking Bronny James. I'm not a fan of the Sporting News mock draft just because I don't think there's any way that Tyler Smith will go this far down or uh, Dillingham will be this far down or, yeah, Clint again or uh, Connect. There's a lot of talented guys that are at the bottom of that, that first round. 2K's draft has us taking Bronny James and Reed Shepard and then Kwame Evans and uh, Almanza. So uh, they, they got Dillingham going low too and Clint again um, and Connect. Let's see who was the uh, who was the last one? NBA.com. NBA.com. Their their shit is terrible. Eves Missy is going first overall, which is a lie. That is a lie. So we're not really buying into any of these damn mock drafts. And they have us also taking Bronny James. They got us taking Rob Dillingham. Topich going number twenty first is not accurate. Um, what I do want to tell y'all as far as like what we interested in and what we looking for. What I will say is why is Eves Missy the number one? Target. Like, who is saying he is the sporting news ranked him as number one? Like, why? Let's go. Let's let's base our list off of um like why is he so high? He should not be this high, bro. Okay. Anyway, he shouldn't even be the number one center. Uh, but anyway, the type of guys that we let's let's just let's just go off overall. Boom. Um we want to target wings. I'm looking for a backup guard. I'm a. I'm gonna put Dillingham on a draft board. I'm also going to put Reed Shepard on a draft board because I'm gonna put Stephon Castle on the draft board. We want we want somebody that can be steady, reliable off our bench. Uh, maybe even a, a spark. I like Dillingham for that. Maybe potentially coming off our bench and. And giving us some shot creation. That's the one thing that I think we lacked. Because when Trey Young came off the bench, I mean, came off the floor, the offense dropped. We just don't have anybody as dynamic. Obviously, I'm not asking or thinking anybody can lead the team while the same way that Trey Young does. But we need somebody that can create their own shot off that bench, whether that's in free agency through the draft or whatnot. So I'm I'm taking I'm taking a look at Dillingham. I like Reed Shepard because of the steadiness he's gonna bring. Um, he just doesn't do too many things wrong. I think if you can have a uh, elite six man shot creator, Jordan Clarkson type guy, the next next best thing is to have a steady point guard who not going to turn the ball over, can make shots, make some plays, um, put a little bit of pressure on a rim and guard his position solidly like that. that that's just a steady backup guard is just as good if you can't have an elite shot creating six man. And um, our main thing is going to be the wings, the two threes and, and, and fours really connect. You on you on our draft board for sure. Um, who else down here that we really, really like? Um, let's look at them threes. I really like a lot of these threes. I like Furphy from Kansas. Six nine who can really shoot it defensively. A lot to be desired, but I think he can be solid. Ryan Dunn, elite off, uh, uh, elite defensively. There are some things he'd have to work on offensively. I think he's our main number one target. Based off where we drafting at, Ryan Dunn is probably our, our our highest rated guy. Like he he's our top guy on our, our our draft board. Just because I think some of these other guys won't be available. Kevin McCuller, upperclassman, ready to come in and hoop out of Kansas come in and, and probably can fit like a like a pro off top so we we eye in him as well at the four position um i like i like i like the silver from colorado i think he can space the floor knock down some shots um and guard multiple positions um i don't think he'd be up here but i do like to jane to, uh, to jane um salone he's nice i think he has some extreme upside which makes me feel like he wouldn't be available and then as far as the four position for the back end, is there anybody I like in the back end? Cole Hawkins could probably be somebody we can look at in the second round. I can't remember if we got any second round picks. Um, and as far as bigs, PJ Hall, big fan of PJ Hall. Add him to the draft board. Um, big fella out of Kentucky. Where he at? Got to add big fella out of Kentucky. Uh, he's only played a handful of games in real life, but I like what I've seen from him. And uh, also, 
solid screener passer energy guy it's worth taking a look at and i'm gonna look again in a shooting guard position I, i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna add dj wagner not the greatest or highest on him we already have 100 percent scouted um let's see what his numbers look like yeah the three-point shot is eh nice mid-range driving layup driving getting to that basket nice handle kentucky guards damn ball handle 69 kentucky guards always find a way to get it done in the pros so he's a guy i think worth adding to the draft list uh i like hunter salas too but we only got him one percent scouted um polar out of out of uh, miami can really knock the shots down so it was just a handful of guys and then you know we'll see who's available when we get there as far as the draft combine who shot the three ball the best the nba three point three pointer okay shireman no surprise there moving threes care okay yukon's finest um Bronny james did i right. reed shepherd did good furphy up there cool we almost had the draft pre-draft workouts we got 11 invites who are some guys that we got scouted so we got reed shepherd scouted 100 percent three point shot at 90 i don't know about that I, I, maybe our scouting department ain't i made this draft class y'all history is not a 90 maybe that's uh our draft our scouting department ain't really uh on a shit all the way so we got to take some of this with a grain of salt because there's no way reed shepherd got a 93 unless 2k decided to change some shit on their own uh we inviting dalton connect one of my one of my high pro prioritized guys don't know if he's going to be available but we we highly interested there stefan castle we love um i'm looking for some of those priority guys mccullough we love ryan dunn we love who else dillingham got to get some reps there pj hall the silver how many invites we have we got four invites left who else who else who else um i wish there was some type of organization to have to all of this because the names are just all over the place let's go to the threes we had we liked a lot of wings furphy boom matthew cleveland i like as well but because he's not that high on the priority list i'm gonna have to pass as far as the invitation um oh pj hall did we invite pj hall pj hall got an invite all right, so I guess some of these next guys, we could just take a look at whoever we like. Tyler Smith, I like. Any more threes? Come on. Um, and then any twos left or ones? Any point guards that, I, that we are high on? Oh, yeah. We'll take a look at Colette from Marquette. And um, we got what? Oh, that's it. That's all of our invites. Any shooting guards that I'm feeling like, man, we got to take a look at? I like Dylan Jones a lot. Matter of fact, yeah, let's take a look at Dylan Jones. Do it all. Combo-y type guard. Cool. Who shot the best in these workouts? Connect. Standing connect. De Silva shot it, shot it as well. Really, really well. Cool. Anybody that we got fully scouted now, we have Dalton Connect fully scouted. He's 82. Cool. Though I did make these, I did touch up a lot of these guys with the attributes and stuff. I don't remember everything off the top of my head. I just know I didn't get Reed Shepard at 93. Like, come on now. Stefan Castle fully scouted. Ryan Dunn. Solid three point shot we can work with. But that perimeter D, 87. Like, it's gonna be nice if we can get if we can get uh Ryan Dunn in here. This is intriguing, y'all. This is intriguing. Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson was one of the guys that I definitely took a look at. I went through all of the rosters and I was just looking at threes and fours, even some twos. And I'm like, man, who could we really try to take a swing at to really come and like really help that wing position for us? I dropped episode seven today. I'm recording this right now um, while episode seven has probably been out for like an hour. And there was a guy in my comments um, who was like, man, P, I really want to see you target Laurie Markkinen. Shout out to Austin. It's Austin. I loved every word that you said. It's a long paragraph. I really, really like the, the detail that you put in, these in this comment. Um, very reminiscent of how I attack this series. So 
he was just saying he would love to, love to see me go after Laurie Marketing. Laurie Marketing is definitely got to have on my list that I want to go go after. But it's like, do we have enough to sway them? The Nuggets are looking to shake up their roster on the last year of Aaron Gordon's deal. I wouldn't do that because he means so much to them. The Pacers, this makes sense a little bit for them. Um, instead of having to pay Nimhard and shorten up that rotation because they got a lot of bodies over there. They take on Brogdon again and you get some draft picks on a cheaper value. The Pelicans. I would do this for the, I would do this. I'll take Herb Jones. Herb Jones is a, a way better defender than what I would get at 20 or 21. Malcolm Brogdon just don't make sense over there. They got Caruso. They got McCullum. They got Alvarado. It, it just doesn't make don't make that much sense. The Lakers, of course, y'all want to do that. The Rockets. Rockets bring somebody in who's steady. They get more draft capital. And they're giving up a first. Dylan Brooks, $22 million salary over the next three years. Eh. Um, I do like them a lot. And then the Thunder, that just don't make sense. After getting swept in the playoffs, the Timberwolves definitely need to make a shakeup move. I don't know if this is the one. I don't I don't know if this is the one. I know they probably lose um, Mike Conley into free agency. I don't know if this is the move, though. They probably should keep J-Mac. And we don't want DeAndre Hunter back. The Warriors trying to give us Kelda Johnson. We good. Corey Kisper. The best deal I like right now is Cam Johnson. But what I am going to do is I'm going to check out what my boy is saying by going to the Utah Jazz and seeing what they are asking for. They're saying no no offers. Laurie's on the last year of his deal. The Jazz didn't make the playoffs. They weren't god-awful, but they didn't make the playoffs. Team-friendly deal. He was solid last year. He wasn't an all-star or nothing like that. Let's see if we can cook up something for Larry. Accidentally started the fucking draft. Okay. Um, Larry marketing. This is during draft night because I accidentally started the draft, which I wasn't trying to do. Malcolm Brogdon. Um, Kobe Bufkin. We'll give y'all 16. We'll give y'all 17. We'll give y'all 19 in the second round and a 2025 second round pick. The Jazz agreed. The Jazz agreed. No pushback. We just made a blockbuster deal of giving the Jazz two first round picks in this year. Malcolm Brogdon expiring. Kobe Bufkin. Sad to see Kobe Bufkin go. And um, two second round picks. The, Jet, uh, the Grizzlies are on the clock. We ain't done, though. We want to see if it's some more moves we can make. Trade finder. We got Laurie. That's crazy. We got Laurie marketing. It ain't hit me yet. Bogey. I love I love you, Bogey. But with Bogey and two first, what would that do? Or matter of fact, let's do Bogey and one first. I want to keep, I want to keep our pick. 76 is intrigued. That makes sense for them. The Bucks intrigued. That makes sense for them, but I don't want Bobby Portis. The Bulls are intrigued, trying to get me J Javon. Um, Al Horford is available from the Celtics with Peyton Pritchard. That makes sense. They would get a nice bench piece plus a first round pick. Um, Clippers trying to get involved. Bryce McGowan's Omega oh, 7. The Kings um, sending them back to the Kings. Bogdanovich on Bogdanovich. Uh, magic. I'm not seeing anything that's really moving me right now, y'all. None of this is moving me. None of this is honestly moving me. What if I just did bogey? What does bogey command on the open market? What does bogey command? The Nets are interested. The Nets have the 11th overall pick. The Nets have the 11th overall pick. Now let's try bogey with two first the jazz are trying to give us clarkson that would just make that that uh larry marketing deal bigger it ain't really much out here for bogey man it ain't much out here for bogey we'll let the draft go and we'll wait to see the first pick for the grizzlies i should have actually jumped in and selected some teams i should have drafted for some of these teams just so that we don't see because they should take alex sar please don't have them take any okay they took alex sar thank you thank you 2k 
Thank you. They took Alex Sar, rightfully so. So the Grizzlies are gonna have a team of Ja, Marcus Smart, Bain, Jaron Jackson, Alex Sar. That's a really, really nice pick for them. Lamelo, Brandon Miller, get Cody Williams out of Colorado. I like that a lot. That's a lot of size. With Melo at the one, what Williams at the two, Brandon Miller at the three. That's six, seven, six, eight, six, nine across your front three. The Bulls take Ron Holland, a guy that I probably would not have taken with the third overall pick, but it's the Chicago Bulls. It's what they do. So shout out to the Chicago Bulls and KB for getting Ron Holland. Um, horrible pick for the Spurs, getting Collier or Collier. I probably would have took Nikola Topic. This is my fault for not controlling all of these lottery teams. Zachary Richardshaw with the Wizards, really good pick for them. The, the Detroit Pistons take Kwame Evans at six. Again, just not not it. The Portland Trailblazers, not it. Um, the Rockets, A.J. Johnson, that fits what they do. I'll get them that. Matas goes to the Portland Trail. That's a much better pick for them. Much better pick for Portland. The Suns get Jacoby Walter. I like that pick for them. Or actually, I don't know because they got Booker, Beal, KD, who knows. Stephon Castle to the Nets. They need a guard. There they go. 76ers get Trevon Brazil. The Nets back on the cock. They get Nikola Topic. So maybe I'll do a swap with the Spurs and them and let the Spurs get Topic because the, 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 the Nets don't need Stephon Castle. And I mean, they do, but come on. Reed Shepard, a guy that we had on our draft board, goes to Portland. They get another guard, another damn guard out there in Portland. Um, they just a guard university. Kyle Filipowski goes to the Pelicans. That's actually a really good fit. Maybe he can play in the front court, space the floor for Zion. The Jazz are using our two picks back to back. They take Bobby Clintman. Not a fan at 16 with some of the names that I think are still available. Um, the Jazz received DeMar DeRozan and the 2024 first round pick. And the Bulls receive a 2024. So the Jazz are giving the Bulls the pick that we gave them. And they're getting back DeRozan. No, I'm not bailing the Bulls out. No. The Jazz take Jedi Mints from Syracuse. I like them. Not at 17. The Jazz just fumbled with those picks that we gave Laurie, which is kind of frustrating me because shit. <laughs> I wanted to see them do something good with them picks. Khalil Ware goes to the Bulls. That's a nice little pick at 18 for them. And at 19, the Miami Heat take Kevin McCullough right before us. The Miami Heat just know how to draft. They just know how to draft. And now at 20, uh, I think our top guy is still up here, Ryan Dunn. This is an incredible draft. Oh, and Dalton Connect. But we got back-to-back -back picks still. So we can take Ryan Dunn out of Virginia. I love that pick a lot. And then now is a tough decision. Now I'm trying to figure out, do we take Rob Dillingham or Dalton Connect? Who do we take? That is a tough, that is a tough one right now. Who do we take? Do we take Dalton Connect? Or Dillingham and try to use Dillingham in a way where he can be a spark off the bench. Just let him rock. Just let him just let him rock. Um right now our roster is Trey Young. We got Bogey and Grimes. We got Larry Markin and we got Thibel. We got Ryan Dunn. We got Jalen Johnson. Ryan Dunn is gonna be a backup small forward. Matisse is gonna move up to the two, even though he's not a ball handler. That's fine. We got we got a guy already. And Trey Young. So Ryan Dunn will be a backup three. We really don't have no one. But man, is Dillingham and Trey Young, is that too small? Do we want to have two real small guards at all times on the floor? Dalton Connect. Would Dalton Connect come in? He would just fight for he would fight for minutes with Quentin Grimes. Um and then, you know. Bogey would probably definitely a thousand percent be out of the door. We got two bigs here. Um, hmm. There's room for a four two, but Larry can also play four. You know, we can do spot things where they start the game together. Maybe Jalen Johnson goes to the bench first. You move Larry to the four. There, there's 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 things that we can do right there. Do I take Dillingham or do I take Connect? Hmm. Connect is a guy, first of all, Connect didn't go to Syracuse. He went to Tennessee. I don't know how I didn't catch that. I just love the profile for Connect. He's athletic. He got size of 6'6". He can dunk on you, spot up, make threes off the catch. 
Not really putting the ball on the floor too much, but he can when he needs to. Perimeter defense solid. And then you look at Rob Dillingham, man. We don't we can't look at his numbers, but dynamic, shifty, shoot off the catch, shoot off the dribble, fast, but will probably be a defensive liability. And that is what hurts us a lot. PJ Hall. We're gonna take Dawn Connect, man. Oh man, this could this might come back and be a regret. Maybe we could find a veteran point guard in the in in the uh maybe we could find a veteran point guard in the offseason. Trey find it. What would the Pacers want for a guy like Nimhart? Knowing that they got all those guards over there. One, two, three. You got a lot of guards over here. What is the price on Nimhart? He gotta get paid next year. They want Quentin Grimes. They want bogey. They'll take bogey. Cause you might lose, you might lose. Oh. See, Nimhar is six four. Nimhar is six four. We should, we should, man. Is there a guard out there that we could look at who like Nimhar a little bit? Jerry McCain, Tyrese Proctor, AJ Mitchell. AJ Mitchell make a lot of sense. AJ Mitchell makes sense, man. Tyler Kolek. AJ Mitchell makes sense. AJ Mitchell make a little bit of sense. We're gonna take Dawn Connect though. I, he, he's too good to pass up on. He's way too good to pass up on. Is that it for us? There's no more draft picks for us in this draft, so we're gonna send him to the end, man. So the recap: Alex Sar went first, Cody Williams, Rob Holland, Collier went for. So we're gonna do a trade of Collier for Topic. I just don't want Spurs, like nah. So real quick, just to update everybody before we advance, what I did was I went in and I actually traded with some teams to get the Jazz proper picks. So like they got Johnny Furphy, he he went to the Clippers. He wasn't gonna play around Kawhi, Paul, that just didn't even make sense. His name is buzzing right now if you are into the college basketball draft stuff. Uh, and then I got them to Jane Saloon. So he had went to the Thunder and I gave them Bobby Clinton, who was more of a Thunder guy. And um, I think this is somebody they would have took if he was still available there. Just just, you know, we got to keep the league balanced and, and, and make it make sense. A couple other things that I did as well. Um, Orlando Magic. I revisited that trade and gave them Anthony Black back. We got to change his number, but he's back with the Magic. Uh, the Golden State Warriors. They have their boy Jonathan Kaminga back um, down here. And then we got to change this jersey number. And then I also made sure that the Spurs got Nikola Topic and not Isaiah Collier or Collier, however you want to pronounce it. And then the Nets got Stefan Castle and Collier. So we'll probably move Stefan Castle's position. Um, He's like a, he could be a two, three wing, whatever, point guard, big point four, whatever. But um, that's just a quick update, just so everybody is on the same type of time. We got to sometimes go in and correct some of the mistakes that 2K makes. Y'all know how this go. All right, so now we got team and player options. Um, unfortunately, because like I said, 2K does a lot of dumb stuff. So we control in all 30 teams just to make sure they don't make no dumb mistakes or decisions. Um. Lonzo Ball said, I'm accepting that player option. Give me my 20 M's, even though I ain't playing right now. So everybody is looking good. Drew Holiday, he accepted his player option, which is extremely surprising. Sam Hauser is a team option. They should accept that Banton is the one that they'll decline. Uh, what else we got? Russell Westbrook declined his, so he's going into free agency. Uh, PJ Tucker declined. Oh, now he accepted his player option and the team option. They're going to decline Daniel Tice, $9 million. So that makes sense. Team option. Why would they decline? No, they're going to keep that one. And because they traded they Roddy, they'll decline his and they'll bring back Jake LaRavia. But I don't. Yeah. Why would they? No, they're not doing that. Um, AJ Griffin. Team option, we definitely letting Fournier go. AJ Griffin, to, uh, we're gonna bring him back, but we trading his ass. All right, we're gonna bring him back and hope somebody else want to take a chance on him. He reminds me of like a Chicago Bull. <laughs> Jovich, they bring him back. Cool, Drew Smith, even though he got hurt, they said, hey, we're declining. He accepted his player option. 
he declined he accepted and then he accepted cool hornets mark williams jt thor both of them back abaje and kessler cool javel mcgee accepted of course you bring back keegan murray on an ob decline so the knicks about to have to give him a bag uh decline sam lebron is if going into free agency this is real life shit. everybody decline team option decline decline everything decline in la that's something to watch for um what else we got real quick Bertans is finally gonna be off that contract so his days of being traded are done caldwell pope is going back to the nuggets they're obviously uh accepting their young guys decline jalen smith know his worth now and ivy i during tate i agree with those yes 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 decline decline accepted 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 decline decline okay <clears throat> or accepted chat shade up isaiah joe cool they got to save some money somehow i am i ain't mad at that timberwolves i think they'll let wendell well they'll bring them back and then shade and sharp of course he accepted russell Ru d'angelo russell is not into he liked he liked he trying to find him a home johnny davis they gonna let him go he they, they i'm not gonna do that to them and he accepted his player option okay they'll bring back pat baldwin jr and that's how we doing that it's not gonna be that crazy of a free agency because james harden and paul george and all those guys resigned with the clippers Kawhi leonard but lbj is gonna be out there um so that's gonna be dope now we into free agency this is a tough thing like i i'm gonna probably just control free agency for everybody for these first so this is what i'm gonna do the first three days I'm going to try to just control everybody's stuff so people ain't spending their money stupidly. Every team, I'm probably not going to go through. Um, and to be honest with y'all, I might edit some of this stuff out and just show y'all only what I do for the Hawks. But I'm just trying to control it and make sure we don't get LeBron James playing for the Wizards because they have a bunch of money or, you know, something stupid like that. I don't want Emmanuel quick. The Raptors lose Emmanuel quickly because they don't want to give him two million extra dollars. It's just stuff like that. This is the work you have to put in when you're trying to keep your league balanced and, and not too crazy. We all obviously want real realism and realistic stuff happening, but the NBA is unpredictable, even in a realistic standpoint. But we definitely don't want it to get wild. And sometimes 2K get wild. I've done this before and I've seen Kawhi Leonard on the Pistons. You get me? 